We will now take a moment for reflection, post-correction. Everyone take a deep breath in. And start the music. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I just hopefully, hopefully it can, comes back. Come on back. Come on back, cryptos. <laughs> uh, before we dive in, let's let's uh, let's put Bitcoin on a one-day chart so we can all remember. It's really very high up. It's very up. This is very very positive for some reason. Very very positive. <laughs> Let's see what's going on in the news, if there's any new FUD or any excitement or if Jamie Diamond has become a shill for Bitcoin now. What's happening? Ah, according to CNBC, Bitcoin tests important price level after dramatic plunge. Bitcoin price drop. Cryptocurrency plunges to lowest level since November from CNN. And why Bitcoin slump could be a good thing. Vice News. That could be interesting. Let's see what Vice News has to say about why Bitcoin slump could be a good thing. Despite the stabilization of Bitcoin's recent slump, a group of researchers warned Thursday the cryptocurrency price is likely to fall farther as the bubble starts to burst. The team at Capital Economics, a London-based research company, sent a hugely pessimistic note to clients Thursday regarding the world's largest cryptocurrency. Claims that cryptocurrencies will replace established fiat currencies are rubbish. Our view is that Bitcoin is a bubble. Indeed, the latest price falls suggest that the bubble is bursting, although with prices still 10 times higher than a year ago, they have a lot farther to fall yet. Ooh, they sound like they want it to happen. And so on and so forth. Read more. Do I want to read more? I can't. I kind of don't really want to. But let's look at Bitcoin news. Oh, hey, I just got a message up here. Hello, thank you for being a great contributor. Here are some BAT tokens on us, basic attention tokens. And uh, I'm not going to claim my tokens right now, but. Uh, that's very exciting. It's very, very exciting. But in the meantime, I don't know where my Google search search bar went. So let's go Bitcoin news. See if we get anything anything remotely better. Cryptocurrency spice is steady with Ripple bouncing back 30%. Interesting. Bitcoin's in a bubble, but Ripple's bouncing back. Okay. We'll see how it goes. Uh... CBOE's first Bitcoin futures contract expired today. Don't know what that means. Don't know if I want to know. St. Louis Fed sees future in crypto as important asset class. Bitcoin as digital gold. Interesting. Yeah. Well, there have been people who have claimed that Bitcoin was dead a lot of times. And uh, evidently it's not. Oh, I want to go to Twitter and just see what's going on in Korea. You should follow me on Twitter. I don't. I don't post very often on Twitter, but I, I, uh, this Joseph Young guy, I like following him. Come on, get to the, I don't want Dirty Eight. I want Joseph Young. There we go. Chairman of the Fair Trade Commission of South Korea. Whether cryptocurrency investment is excessive speculation or not, the risk is on the investor, and thus the government should not outright ban economic activity because it's risky. That's for individual investors to decide. Well, duh, yeah, that's good. I'm going to retweet this. How do I do that? I think that's the little retweet thing. Look at that. I just retweeted. And I'm going to say, yes. There we go. I'm participating in social media right here in front of you. How exciting. Yeah, so one guy gets it. Yeah, the government wants its citizens. If the government wants citizens free of risks and care about their well-being, they should stop taxes. <laughs> Such a stress source. I like it. Yeah. 
The Korean government has clearly decided that only accredited investors are able to make a decision. The poor will not be allowed to decide for themselves since the newly proposed regulations prevent unaccredited investors from using Korean exchange. Yeah, that's interesting. So, anyway, all that been said, we've had a big correction, and I haven't looked at any of the charts on any of the other cryptos. Not because I was discouraged or depressed, even though I was. <laughs> but there's like, sometimes there's just nothing you can do. And selling when everything is down is not the right idea. Let me, can I tell you a little story? A little story. I bought four houses for nothing down at the top of the 1980s real estate bubble. And shortly after I purchased them, they were all worth less than I owed on them. And uh, it was not a good feeling. It was about the worst feeling in the world. So one of the things that I did is I tried to find different ways to make enough money to make my mortgage payments, and eventually that failed. Uh, and I just walked away from it all. And uh, But looking back, if I just hung on, if I'd found a way to pay those mortgages, <laughs> I would be pretty wealthy today because those four houses then appreciated. You know, once that bubble popped, the real estate market recovered three years later and just took off. I would have probably tripled or maybe, maybe not tripled, but doubled my money using other people's money, you know, the banks. Um, but the lesson I learned is don't give up too soon. And uh, so let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's learn. Let's learn every goddamn day. Let's learn from, you know, everything that happens and to realize this, these charts are really literally human emotions on a global scale being recorded. It's like an AKG or EKG or it's like a, one of those things you see in the hospital, you know, with the patient. Do, 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 and uh, right now, this big move up here might need a big move down here. And that scares the hell out of me. It scares out of a lot of people. But we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. And we don't know. And so many people in the world are seeing this and going, okay, it might be a good time for me to get in now, right? I don't know. So anyway, let's look at it. Bitcoin is actually still on the one-day chart. It's above the 100-day average. It has not even come down to touch the 200-day average. That scares me, because that means it could, right? And it might. Um, but looking at these patterns, just looking at the patterns with all this averagey stuff, what would I think? Looking at the patterns, if I didn't know anything, which I don't. By the way, please don't take anything that I say as investment advice, because I'm here in front of you learning and I'm earning while I'm learning, and I've done pretty well so far, but I'm still learning, right? And if I look at this chart, what do I see? Here's, here's what I see. I see some support here, but I don't see a lot of support. At the $10,000 $10, mark is pretty pretty much the the main support spot here 10 ish approximately you know I can't quite dial it in the way I want to um, we also have a ton of support right here kind of where it is right now maybe a little higher kind of like in this area which would be like 12,000, right? These are big evens on the U.S. dollar chart. Okay, what does that tell us? I don't know what it tells us. It tells us there's some support here and some support there, and maybe it'll come back. You know, what I would like it to do, <laughs> what I want it to do, is to do a sideways trading range where it goes back and forth, up and down, for about three months in this range. So it gets used to its new prices, but enables people to make money by buying low, selling high, 
getting back in, buying low, selling high. That's what I would like. See if that can happen. We're just going to mind meld. Just imagine it happening. Imagine it happening. Uh, but the beauty is it's going to do whatever it does because there's so many people and the balance is between the buyers and the sellers. Do you think it's going to keep going up or do you think it's going to fall? The more experienced people tend to sell up here. And then the, the newbies sell because they're scared because they got in up here and it looks like it's going to fall. So, I don't know. That's... That's my mind meld with Bitcoin today. And unfortunately, um, you know, we have lower tops and we don't really have higher bottoms at this point. So what does that mean? I don't know. I don't know what it means. <laughs> that's why I'm here to learn. All right. So uh, anyway, that's Bitcoin. I'm not going to like beat it with a stick, but we're going to grind through these. We have a little bit of a recovery. Bitcoin Cash really went down to some pretty solid support, never went below it, maybe dipped a little bit, but it seems to be recovering. We'll see if it can or not. Same deal with Bitcoin Gold. Still a ton of support here on this 200, you know, 210, 209, 208 line, this area here ton of support there and it's it's below it at the moment and on the uh, the RSI never dipped never dipped down to the 30 I mean it certainly has on the one hour chart but let's just stay with the uh, one day chart here because we want to I want to see the bigger picture the bigger pattern um, dash has recovered nicely so that's good to see what is EOS doing EOS is hanging in. We got higher bottoms in EOS. Not bad. It's not the end of the world. Look at this. Not bad. We do have, you know, some resistance here. But that's okay. Whoops. Let me get this end up a little bit. Not bad. I think EOS looks okay. Going to be okay. Let's look at uh, Ethereum Classic. Not that I'm into it, but look, Ethereum Classic supported. Went down to support. Never dropped below this significant support. That's good to see. Zab so started to feel encouraged. Starting to feel encouraged. Ethereum. Ethereum was boosting like a son of a gun, but look at this. It's actually right on its course for a beautiful rise. <laughs> IOTA, never touched down below the 30. IOTA did have a dip, but it looks like it's coming back. What's Litecoin doing? I had a dip, I had a drop, but it's coming back. That's interesting. And we'll see if it gets right back up to where it was going to go or what. Neo, I'm pissed at Neo because I sold all of mine a long time ago and uh, never really got a chance to get back in. So, all right, Neo. Okay. So, I think a lot of people that had some money on the side, which is really the lesson from all this, is that there always needs to be a war chest. And I started talking about that, but I never really had a chance to develop it after I decided that that's what I wanted to do. Um, and I thought things were already down enough, but I wasn't experienced enough to understand that things could go way lower uh, and that maybe that was, it was time to do that. So we'll see. But my contention is it's only if you actually have money on the line that you're going to learn this stuff. That's how I learned. And having money on the line, this this stuff is real. And you have to react to it, respond to it in a way that doesn't take you down emotionally. And I, I really wasn't discouraged at all yesterday. I was just like, okay, I'm going to take the day off. I'm not going to look at this stuff. I'm not going to torture myself. So Omise Go, we had the bounce down. It's coming back. Um, something that's really interesting here. As you look at these, the very tips of these wicks, um, 
you know, and where they actually went. And if you think of this as a caterpillar that's climbing up a stick, it's still climbing up. Even though it touched down here, it's still climbing up. You know, and I don't know if, if I would make the line like this. You know, that's still a significant rise. Still a significant rising movement. So we'll see if it keeps going that way or if this is just the beginning of a slide. And that's and we won't know until we watch it. Quantum. We had quite the drop. And um, it looks like it's recovering. Still a good price if you want to get some. I mean, all of these are decent prices. But the, quest, the next question is, you know, are they going to really recover or... Is there going to be a whole change in direction and are things going to slide now? And that's the question I don't know the answer to. I'll start watching some of these other guys today, uh, you know, like Data Dash and Crypto Investor and Crypto Grinders, all three of which I highly recommend, um, just to get their perspective. And, you know, they don't know what's going to happen next either. And that's the thing is nobody knows. But I still think... This is the only place on the face of the earth where the average person can put in a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, a thousand bucks, and start improving their financial situation. I still believe that, and uh, you know, a lot of people are going to lose money because there's, you know, there's no real way to learn this other than doing it. And when you do it, if you don't have financial maturity, if you've never worked on your money issues, if you've never cleared your limiting beliefs about money, you're going to you're gonna express a lot of those through this activity. You know, it's like people who win the lottery often end up broke again, or at the very least, it kind of screws up their lives. So the thing is, people have been protected from having to learn how to manage money, and I think I think that's intentional. I think our education system, probably all over the world, is designed to keep people a little bit unaware of the fact that every country is operating with funny money that is just printed willy-nilly by the central banks. Interesting stuff. So I still think this is revolutionary, and I still think governments will do everything they can to do what South Korea just did. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that. So should be an interesting time in the history of the world. Ripple uh, dropped dramatically and then had a dramatic rebound. So I want to see a sideways trading range for a while on Ripple before I get involved. <laughs> you know, burn me once. <laughs> Don't burn me twice. All right, uh, Zcash. You know, literally, <clears throat> we had we had a huge drop in recovery. But if you look at, if you just make a line from where it was, right, from its last place down to these wicks, right, it's still a significant uptrend. If you just look at the wicks, you know, these real drops. But they were so momentary. But you know what? It's literally this kind of the same. It's the same angle of attack. So, uh, you know, we may have to come down to this trend line, and there may need to be some, you know, some continued adjustment. We shall see. Cardano. <clears throat> First, I have to look at Cardano against Bitcoin. Looks pretty good. That's that's really sweet. Right, but then I have to look at Cardano against U.S. dollar tether. Uh, not too bad, but I got to go to a let's go to a twelve-hour chart <clears throat> to a little more data because this is a new a new chart. Uh, you know, we had a pretty serious slide, and I thought that was our drop. Right, I had a little boost. I'm like, oh, we're back in the saddle, and then more more drops. So. Uh, my last purchase of Cardano was at 75 cents, so I'm not too out of the money. Uh, I bought some at a dollar, I bought some at 80 something, and I bought some at 75, and then I was out of money, <laughs> right? So the next time 
I'm going to buy less as something's going down. I'm going to ladder in with, with less enthusiasm. I tend to kind of go all in a little too quickly. So that's one of the big things that I'm learning. And I just want to look at basic attention token against Bitcoin. Not bad. So basic attention token uh, is something that I used to have a lot of. I sold all of it off, and I want to get more uh, on a correction. So uh, we're, we're still early in the project, but I use the Brave browser, and I like basic attention token. So for me, it's like I'm beginning to find projects that I like enough to think about holding them long term, which takes a lot of the trading pressure off. Um so that I can maybe begin to focus again on my music because uh, I've been obsessed with this. So anyway, that's that's it for today. I think I'm encouraged, people. I'm encouraged that uh, stuff is bouncing back, you know, and we needed the correction. Uh, not a pretty thing. This is Bitcoin on the one hour, I mean the 12 hour chart. Uh, you know, so uh, let's let's look at it on a one-hour chart and then be done for the day. We're checking in with Mama Papa Bitcoin. There's a lot of hours here, and on the one-hour chart, we definitely dropped below the 30 RSI, a bunch of spots here. Boom, boom, ba -da 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 -da. so maybe that's encouraging. I don't know. However. Thanks for learning with me. I appreciate you guys so much. And thanks for the thumbs up and the great, the kind comments I had yesterday. I'm going to respond to them while this is processing. I just had to step away, you know, and uh, and just keep things in perspective. And uh, it worked out. I won't be quitting my day job anytime soon. But I'm working on it. And I hope you guys are working on it too. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear how you're doing, how you're weathering the storm. And I hope some of you are picking up bargains. I hope some of you have a war chest and are picking up some bargains today uh, because the prices look still pretty good. But we got to watch it. We'll see. All right. That's it for today. Thank you very much. Peace, grooviness, over and out. And uh, start the music.